Every time he puts on a hat, he looks like a Domino's delivery man. Good day, Frank. <laughs> that's me. <laughs> um, so, Frank, if that's your real name. It's um, <laughs> it isn't, right? Okay. I had so, to do some research. So it is. If you hear him yelling, it's because somebody's done, done something wrong. <laughs> Someone is not doing what is necessary. They should be. Yeah, he's not pumping out carousels and <laughs> quick enough. <laughs> <laughs> right? Man, what oh, is going the on? The carousel game. Really? Okay, I'm taking a picture. Hold on. Taking a picture. Okay, cool. Love it. All right, I'm, I'm Mario. We're ready. <laughs> we're ready. Of course, we're ready. All right, Dave. Are you re are you ready? Yeah, let's do it. Let's do so it, Dave. For this, all in. Here we go. Okay, so we'll officially start here. Welcome to another episode of the Dadpreneur. We're with Dadpreneur. We're with uh, Good Day Frank, and we'll find yeah. out his real name in the episode. Oh, but we have Mario and Mo co-hosting. What's up? And I'll be leading point today. Um, so Mario, tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, I am Mario from Hawaii, originally from Los Angeles, California. I um, went to art school there. I run a little agency in Honolulu called Made by Maker. Uh, we work with fitness brands. We help them get stronger as a brand so that they can continue to make people stronger. Um, and that's about a bit about me. I do a lot of mind shift, mindset uh, coaching as well. Cool, cool, cool. And Mo, tell us a little bit about yourself and what you're up to. Oh, your mic, your mic. It's so a noob. Cool. What a noob. What a scrub. <laughs> what a scrub. <laughs> <laughs> I go by the name Mo Isma. I am an entrepreneur. I run an agency that focuses on video, helping lifestyle brands connect to their audience using video. And I'm a dad of a beautiful eight-month-year-old. Awesome, awesome. Uh, my name is Dave Coe. I'm here in Vancouver, Canada. Uh, I run a little motion studio here. I've been doing motion for almost 25 years. Uh, I have twin girls and a four-year-old toddler who's their kind of their boss, their ringleader. <laughs> Soon to be their servant, I'm sure. Absolutely. <laughs> and today we have G'day Frank as our special dadpreneur guest. So G'day. Frank, get us up to speed. Like your name, is your name Frank? No, oh, we're going to go no, straight no, into that? No, Are we going to go straight into that? No, 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 Okay. We can tuck into it. We can okay. tuck into it and then I can intro, intro myself. That's fine. Yeah. That's all good. So we would also, like also like your tax number, your <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. social security. We don't actually have that in Australia, but <laughs> um, so g'day. My real name is Reagan. I go by Frank from g'day Frank. Um, I use Frank as um, my identifier name here on socials and online, mainly for ease of use for clients. Um, Francis is my middle name. It's named after both my grandfathers. So that's where Frank comes from. And um, kind of like a logo to have, the, to have something that's easily remembered, um, easy to pronounce, spell, all the rest of it. That's why I chose Frank and then named my business G'day Frank after that. Um, as a nice way for someone to um, answer the phone and say, G'day, um, G'day Frank, how you doing, mate? Or I can answer the phone saying, G'day Frank speaking. And uh, yeah, just something nice as an easy sort of call to action. Um, but yeah, I run a design uh, business mainly focusing on branding, uh, but I also do a lot of TV production um, identity design here in Australia. Um, I'm from Sydney. I'm in the Blue Mountains, which is an hour west of Sydney. It's a very idyllic lifestyle with a family um, that is slowly growing. We are a team of three at the moment, being myself, my wife, and my two-year-old little boy, um, and uh, trying to juggle that life with entrepreneurship, which is why I'm here today, I'm guessing. <laughs> Absolutely. Love it. So, um, so I was going to just, you answered my first question, which was, what exactly do you do? Like, you're a designer. Um, yep. What specifically have you done or are you doing these days? Um, what I have done, I guess, in my career um, has been a lot of TV 
um, production identities. So of the caliber of um, Family Feud. So in Australia, there was a Family Feud version of your American one, um, or I don't know if it's in Canada, Dave, um, but we did the identity rebrand for that here for an Australian local version. Um, I've put um, wraps on the side of planes for The Apprentice up in Asia because the CEO of Air Asia was like the Donald Trump of that Asian series of The Apprentice. Um, so I put plastered his face with the whole Apprentice wrap across the side of an A320 aircraft. Um, did the same thing as well for um, Asia's Got Talent, which is their kind of version of America's Got Talent or Australia's Got Talent. Um, same thing on the side of a Jetstar plane, which is an airline here in Australia and up in Asia. Um, so that was kind of a cool highlight while working for a production company called Fremantle. Um, I still work a bit with them at the moment um, with this business. And uh, otherwise, it's, it's mainly working with small to medium um, businesses here in Australia to brand or rebrand their businesses. Um, so yeah, that's where I'm at. Sweet. Can I, can I brag on, on Frank or, or Reagan for a second? <laughs> yeah. let's, stick, let's stick with Just stick with Frank. First of all, I feel I feel like like my with, life... <laughs> I'm like Beyonce or something like, or Ronaldo. You, you are. Know. You're, the, you're the Beyonce of Australian design, aren't you? Just a total pretentious asshole, you know. <laughs> before, before we get into all the dad and parenty stuff, like, first of all, I feel like my life is a lie that your name is Reagan, but that's, that, <laughs> that also this is what everyone says on here. I can't believe it. <laughs> you know, grow up here and realize. <laughs> that also indicates your brilliance in branding because yeah. Good Day Frank yeah. is very, very strong brand. But... Yeah. Frank was like my first best friend on Instagram when I really took the content game seriously. Like he went uh, on the story, he posted nice. copy, he posted video, he shouted me out. Like he dedicated like a good 30 minutes to an hour with me in conversation via, before everyone was telling everybody how to DM right. You know what I mean? He was, <laughs> he was hitting me with the voice memos, with the text from a very genuine humble and and value add driven place and i just wanted to publicly on record on the dadpreneur podcast like give you love and thank you for that because y you like you're you're just awesome in that regard like right, you're man, super stop. genuine you gotta, bro you, you gotta stop man this head is already big enough <laughs> My head doesn't fit into hats, so don't make it any bigger. <laughs> I just wanted to show love about the person behind nah. the Frank. You know what I Thank mean? Thank you very much, man. Yeah, that's all, One, that's, that's 100%. all I have, Dave. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, no. I, I mean, I, I can totally back that out. I, I, I've had less interaction with... The, with. Do I call you Frank? I can just yeah, call him Frank. Stick, stick with Frank, guys. <laughs> with Frank. And uh, uh, I remember the first time that we, I guess, talked about uh, him coming on this, this uh, podcast. And he immediately sent me a video DM through Instagram, which I didn't even know you could really do. Uh, See, I felt like such thing. a, a noob. I was like, whoa, uh, what, is, what is this so coming many, from? <laughs> so many people that reply to me, though, they press the wrong button and press like the live call button. So they start doing like a live call and I jump on with them. They're like, oh, I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> yeah. Just like, and I wrong button down the bottom there. You just hold the button and keep doing it. Yeah. I've, I've done that too. <laughs> but I thought that was a brilliant, I mean, I don't know if you do that with your clients, but uh, I thought that was a brilliant move on your part. Um, just yeah. to get, it's so different reading text versus seeing someone, seeing someone's face addressing yeah. you personally. It makes such yeah. such a world of difference. So, yeah. um, great, great uh, move. Yeah. There. So, so Frank, just kind of jumping off that. I mean, that was one of the <clears throat> most special days in my life when I opened my DMs and I saw your face um, talking to me. I was like, whoa, who's this? Um, <laughs> It was beautiful. I was I, I was a little teary eyed, and I I marked the day. Uh, I saved that oh. I saved that video to just kind of watch every every we'll send once you a greeting in a while. Card next year. Uh, yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Make sure it's a video greeting card. <laughs> yes, <yeah>. um, <laughs> so ones with the dancing elves. Yes, <laughs> please. So, um, along with that, just like you know, I think you have a very specific, um, unique take on social media, and where does that come from? Where, where, where do you feel like that has is is that just kind of um, ingrained in you, um, you know, culturally, is it, is it kind of just part of your, your upbringing? Is, you know, you seem like a very outgoing social person. Like, is that true? Are you not, are you not, I'm, I'm very much an introvert. I'm an ambivert mainly, but, um, I'm kind of lean towards the introvert side as, as most of my creative brethren are, but, um, when I need to turn it on, I'll turn it on. Um, so, you know, where does that come from? 
um, probably from some little dark place that just never could get out. <laughs> <laughs> and this is just my creative outlet to do so. Um, I mean, look, I, I think many creatives are very much introverted and very much quiet individuals that sit in a room and would happily create and that, you know, make, that would make them happy. Um, that was me for a very long time and depending on who I'm with, the personality would definitely change per that person that I'm engaging with. So around family, I'm not that um, overtly extroverted or anything like that in terms of my personality. Um, and this is something my wife says a lot was, and even her friends do as well. They comment on my stuff and say, you know, you don't sound anything like this in real life. Like why, why ham this up on, on Instagram and YouTube and, and all of it? And I said, well, would you want to see me the way that, I mean, <laughs> yes, you'd probably want to see me the way, but would it be, would it be interesting? Like, would it be engaging? Would it grab your attention? If I just stood in front of a camera and said, you know, hi, my name is Reagan and um, I design and um, I really like it. It's a passion of mine. And you know, it, it doesn't come across as, genuine it, it seems very scared and limiting and everything like that and if you're going to put yourself out there confidently it kind of needs to show that confidence and this is why i connected so much with mo when i've discovered mo and just having his stories and he's like hi mo I'm and i was like holy shit this guy has some <laughs> energy and um and just love that kind of you know not attention to detail but just that enthusiasm and um and confidence because at the end of the day, confidence is, is sexy and you kind of want to give that little bit extra to somebody to make sure that you are, you know, connecting with somebody still genuinely. Like, as I said, I don't really talk like this all the time. So that's kind of not so genuine. But what I do say is from a good place, though, um, and I hope it's either helpful or entertaining or gives some insight into who I am. Um but even still, like to do all this kind of stuff, it's such a long game play. And um, like, I haven't seen one client out of the efforts that I've put out on Instagram. Um, and I'm totally fine with that. I don't think it's the place to find clients for me personally. I think I need to get out there physically and, and really start knocking on some doors apart from referrals and that. But for me, social media is a place there to show a client that does find me elsewhere or I do find them and then they start going Google hunting for, you know, who the hell I am and they discover me on Facebook or Instagram or LinkedIn and then go, okay, this guy knows what he's talking about. He's showing his personality so I know what he's going to be like when we are interacting if we do go through it with an engagement and um, he either has some good work or knows what the hell he's talking about kind of thing. So that's why I do what I'm doing with the G'day Frank content. Um, and it, to be honest, I'm just totally winging it. I don't know what I'm doing. Um, <laughs> I don't think really anyone truly does, unless you're a social media manager that's been doing this for a long time and you get the whole marketing side of things and what works. Um, or even with Mo having that, you know, psychology kind of background of understanding how people work. I, I don't know how people work. Um, That's damn putting... good winging if you're winging it. I mm -hmm. Right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's so good yeah. winging. If you're... <clears throat> yeah, yeah. And that's kind of how I felt about the whole, my whole life. It's just kind of, I hit hurdles. I overcome it because at the end of the day, I think that it works out for a reason. And, um, you know, I've sat in a, a corner office, not a corner corner office by the, you know, the height of that kind of example, but, at the corner of an office sitting you know, by myself as the only creative in the building for seven years. And maybe it just all sort of bundled up and far removed from the design community to the point where in, in the end of 2017, I was like, you know what? I am going to leave this business and start my own business that I've always wanted to do since I finished university near 10 years ago now. And um, I need to get my head back in the game of this design community. Otherwise I'm just going to wing it and absolutely you know, fail, which is where I discovered the future. And that kind of was a gateway to, it was like a gateway drug really, <laughs> which you guys obviously are very well aware of. And um, that bred G'day Frank and the confidence to start that up and, and go out um, and absolutely smash it. Like my first, and this isn't to brag either, but the first 12 months of this business or even eight months, like I doubled the salary that I was having at my previous job and yes. I was like, 
you know, why haven't I done this before? But in the, and that's what a lot of people said. Do you regret not doing it earlier? I'm like, no, because timing is everything and it probably might not have happened the way it should have back then. Um, but even still in the last three years, uh, you know, I had my girlfriend who I then proposed to and my wife. We got married. We went overseas, had a big honeymoon. We then had a baby and that throws a whole other spanner in the works. And then it came to last year where I was like, okay, this is the time to do it now, I think. And, you know, it's a huge, it's a huge gamble to hold the phone, hold the phone. Yeah. You, no, this, the dad, the business, the marriage, everything has been in three years. Did I yeah. just go robot? Less. Less. No, no, everything is. Oh, no, no. Yeah. Right. Three years to now. Yeah. We've been married three years. Yeah. Oh, okay. Let's, let's get into that because he's, <laughs> Frank is dropping so much right now. I'm like, my, my notebook is already almost full. Let's talk about this confidence is sexy and showing personality thing and how that translates to how you're influencing your son now that you're putting yourself out there. Because I've seen some stuff where you put your son on the gram, but I'm more interested in through this journey of Good A Frank and building mm. a personal brand, how has that influenced the way in which you're now influencing your son? Um, it's a tough one. Um, I don't, firstly, I don't want to show my son on these channels that I have just for, I don't know where this stuff will go or to who. And I think it's like, I, I watched Casey Neistat on YouTube for, for years with his content. And yes, he did show his little daughter and his son for a time there. And then it got to a point where his daughter grew to an age that she was recognizable and stopped showing uh, her. And I was like, that is damn admirable. Like this guy has a 10 million people following from around the world for security reasons for him, especially. I think that's a very wise decision. And I thought, I don't think I'm going to get to that kind of height, but I think it's an appropriate thing to do. So while I've shared my son's name through a logo that I've designed and put that on G'day Frank and I hint at little things about him and everything like that, because I think that shows um, a bit of who I am as a, a father, as well as a business owner. And that might be relatable to a client. I'm not, I don't know. Um, and so in terms of my influence of this business onto him, I, I probably would akin it to, or, or assimilate it to the way that my father operated when I was a kid. So my dad has always been a contractor um, and he worked <laughs> and he, you'll love this story as well. He started as a drum roadie, so drum kit roadie and everything from the UK. Yes. Um, he then met uh, Phil Collins, so the guy that did, you know, In the Air Tonight. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> um, he met him, became his drum roadie, followed um, Phil when he became the lead and drummer for Genesis when Peter Gabriel, all what? that happened. And um, so my dad followed him and was, you know, roadie for them. And then Genesis's tour manager, I don't know, went AWOL. They said, Andy, you're going to be the tour manager. And he was like, okay. <laughs> so he became the tour manager of Genesis. And my dad is very anal and he's very practical and, and pragmatic with his work and, and very attention to detail oriented. And so from a very small age of riding along the waves of, private jets, hotels and everything going around the world with him at the age that I was between zero and four. Um, and then upwards from four to, you know, 18 or whatever, when he settled down to live, you know, in Australia permanently to, to work here only. Um, I see that work ethic of having to remove himself from family life and invest the time into the business. Cause at the end of the day, that's what brings the paycheck in. But at the same respect as well, there were still times where in the afternoon he would go outside and play you know, cricket with me here, um, which is a big thing here in Australia. Um, and he was a, you know, a shocking person at, at sport at the best of times, but he still gave an effort. Um, and so <laughs> seeing those times where you can still walk away from things and, and still apply yourself to family life and, and still gave myself and my sister a very, very you know, affluent, you know, crazy kind of upbringing where we'd go on you know really nice holidays and all these kinds of things and you know to compare that to say my wife who you know had a very modest kind of upbringing with her family she's like you had it so good 
Um, but to see that work ethic, and I think that's now translating into how I operate, where, yes, I remove myself from the situation to do the work and close the door in this office that we have. Um, yeah, it, it's, it's like I've heard you guys say before in your podcast already, it's tough when you can hear something really good going on outside, like real fun, and you're like, you can hear him laughing or you can hear, you know, my wife laughing and they're really having a good time. Um, and then you, you kind of, if you've got a deadline or something and you need to be, you know, investing your time in that to afford your, your clients, your, that respect of, you know, what you're doing for them. Um, but in the same respect, if, you know, shit hits the fan and something's going crazy and you can hear something that's just like, okay, I need to drop everything now and just go out there. <laughs> you you'd need to do that too. So, um, the third part to that then, and I feel like I'm absolutely monologuing here, and I do this in my own podcast, <laughs> um, is that I started this G'day Design Life um, account, resource, whatever you would want to call it. Um, yes, it was. It, yes, it's a resource or something that is from myself not having this when I started my own business, but this is something I haven't really kind of advertised as part of what, a design life is is that if my son or any future child of mine shows some creative talent and wants to get into what dad's doing and wants to be a logo designer or whatever it is and my sister does the same kind of stuff as well uh, by the way yeah. um this all this would be a resource for him or her or you know whichever child comes after um and i think that's a nice kind of incentive to make something that is meaningful and purposeful apart from just, you know, trying to reach as many people as possible or to, you know, validate myself that, you know, this is what I needed and, and all that kind of stuff or monetize it or, or whatever it is. If that's the only long-term payoff, I'll be happy with that. That's, that's awesome. I, I love the, uh, we'll just talk about that, that last piece of just the knowing that this is, what you're building is an evergreen it's an evergreen trove of content for your son specifically i love that i love the yeah. the mentality behind that just like hey you know what i'm going to teach everything that i know to my son how can i do that now and yeah. you're reaching out and you're mentoring and and you have a heart for you know it's it's mainly for young designers right uh, good at design life yeah it's so it's for um you know primarily aussies that have either left university or like me are, were in a full-time job or are in a full-time job and want to start their, a full-time business or even a side hustle business um, because this information is something that I didn't have or even consider when I was at university that running your own design business was a viable option. It was always, mate, you need to have a portfolio and you walk out and you get a job. I applied to 30 different places, got no calls back. And, uh, yeah, it was, you know, it's just, and like I, I graduated at the top of my class with, you know, high, dis, well, not high, dis, it was distinction or something like that, had a university medal out of it as well and couldn't find, you know, a freaking job out yeah. of that. And it's like, well, what the hell did I do wrong? Or, you know, and it's like, kind of like if I'd have gone out and started this business, then where would I be now? which isn't a regret by any stretch of the imagination. It's just like, what, what would have happened and what could that do for somebody that is in that same situation now, which I'm seeing with, or which I've seen with Jacob Cass. So we're the same age. Um, oh. We're both from Sydney and we have very, you know, similar parallel kind of lives. But he, as soon as he finished university, he went and did the whole freelance thing. And he's where he is now with a very good standing in the design community and even with many, many businesses around the world. Um, and that's kind of where I think possibly that's where I could have been. And I don't, I don't think, you know, <laughs> I don't, um, I'm not jealous or envious of that. I think what he's done is fantastic and, and that's his own life and he's done it in his own unique way, which is, which is awesome. But on the other end of it, I've seen a girl that I've connected with that lives up here in the Blue Mountains with me that does social media management. And she's 21. She has a business now of four herself and four other girls and is absolutely oh. smashing it. And I'm like, wow, this can actually happen for, for these individuals now that you have the resources that you do and social media and all that kind of stuff to build up a business that is viable. And 
and she doesn't even have a degree or anything like that. She didn't go to university or whatever. Uh-huh. And her, her father told her that social media was never going to get her anywhere. So, <laughs> you know, it, it's crazy what you can do nowadays. And that's kind of what I'd hope to see a lot of Australians um, realize. Not they don't have to do it or anything like that, but just to realize and, and see that it's a viable option and see that it is something that's not so daunting. Um, because I thought it was daunting going into it. And then once I realized it was only, you know, five major things, I was like, okay, done. You know, who yeah. do I ask to get help with this? And that's it. So that's, uh, yeah. I have a follow up, <laughs> but I can see that Dave's unmuted. So go for I, Dave. I don't know if no, I- no, no, go ahead. Go ahead, Mo. Oh, okay. You said that there's, it sounds like there was a big, oh my, hold on. Am I you're good. You're good. Hold you're on good. back. I it, I heard that there's like this big mindset shift for you going from mm. nine to five to entrepreneur. And, and then I heard you compare to other people's journeys, which, you know, can be a double edged sword. And I, and I, and I realized that you said, you know, not, not envious or anything like that. What I'm more interested about is now that you've gone through that mindset shift and mm. have seen kind of the gold at the end of the rainbow, because you've been in your own business for a while now and are now creating a platform for other people. You just said something so powerful where, the social media manager's father said that social media is not going to get her anywhere, right? Now you're a father, you've had a taste of both worlds. What are you going to be telling your son as whether he grows into a creative line of work or he Mm. grows into his own line of work? How are you going to nurture that mindset so he can execute with speed and not have to kind of fumble in, Mm -hmm. um, in the way that we've had to and, and in the way that you shared in your story? Uh, I think it's being, well, firstly, very self-aware of what it is that you want to do and, and what you excel at. Um, the second would be to understand what is going on in the world that is gaining the most attention at the time. So right now, obviously, it's social media in the form of, of Instagram, um, LinkedIn, TikTok, Facebook, Snapchat, you know, all the plethora and YouTube. Um but, you know, in 20 years or eight, what, 16 years when he's 18 and he's you know, going to walk out this door, um, you know, who knows, <laughs> you know, who knows? There wasn't the iPhone, you know, 10 years ago. So it, you can never sort of predict the future. I think it's just adapting to what is of the time then and not, and for my end of the stick is not limiting that the accessibility to something that would that is, you know, might not be a socially, socially acceptable form of communication or whatever it is, because still social media has its own, you know, daggers still from a lot of the community, even here in Australia. It's very still frowned upon for kids to engage with it. And I totally agree with it. I don't think it's the appropriate place for kids to engage with each other um, until they're of an age where they understand what the consequences are of what they post online is. Um, but I'd say that cultural mindset will shift by the time he's 18 and there'll be just a new thing that it's just the unaccepted thing. Like, you know, if you go back to the fifties or whatever, Elvis was the devil, you know, just for doing, you know, for shaking his hips kind of thing. So it's, it's dependent on what's at the time. And I'm kind of, of a mindset now in my own head. I don't know if I'm getting older and wiser. I don't know, but you're becoming a lot more. I am getting older. (laughs) You're getting older. Um, (laughs) These bags are telling me, um, is that to be open and um, and not close minded to new and um, scary things or, or unheard of things or um, unprecedented things. It's kind of being open and looking at it from an objective point of view to understand where someone's coming from. Like even you know um, same sex marriage here in Australia was very very much a controversial topic. Um, a couple of years ago and look between myself and my wife we were all very much for it but you can see the total um conviction of those that are of a faith that believe it shouldn't you know be a thing here and you have to accept their opinion and it's the same thing with if it's social media if someone thinks that it it's just not right or you shouldn't have you know you shouldn't be spending eight hours a day on social media like i do um it's not healthy for you it's like, so what? I want to do it. Why, you know, why do you need to tell me what I need to do if I'm of an age that I can consciously understand what is it I'm doing? What's it to you? Um, if I'm not doing anything wrong by societal standards of, you know, law or whatever, then 
you know, stuff it. I'm going to do, <laughs> going to do what I want to do. Um, and if my son gets to an age where he wants to, I don't know, stream, be a YouTube streamer or video gamer or whatever, I'd be like, mate, go for it. You want to join a band and go tour around the world? Go for it. You know, do whatever. Because this is something I mentioned to my wife the other day. It was like, do we, if he shows an interest in one particular area of it was like sport or creativity or, or whatever it is, do we push that so that he could potentially excel at it? So if he was really good at soccer, do we put him in soccer from a very early age and engage with him as much as possible and like buy him soccer balls and kits and all this kind of stuff to make it a thing? Or do we just let him just buy a soccer ball and that be that? And, you know, then until the time that he can actually say, you know, dad, I want to play soccer. Um, and is it, is it one or the other or is it both or is it just, seeing how things go i that's the part that just goes i don't know what i'm doing as a parent like it, it's weird um so and this is the other thing as well just while i'm ranting as well is to know that you are still a, a, a parent this is something that i wanted to talk to you guys about was that it's been two years that i've had a son now and there are times where it's like i don't feel like a father i don't feel like i actually have a child there's some nights where he'll go to bed and i'll be like and then you, you'll start hearing him like crying or whatever. You go, oh, that's right. I have a son. It's like, it's a bit of still a surreal feeling in my mind. And I can see you guys laughing at that, which is, which is a nice thing to be relatable with, you know, three other dudes. But um, if you get what I mean, it, it's one of those things that just, it still feels surreal. And my wife's like, you are an effing idiot. Like, it, because it's different for, for her because she's birthed the thing and is, is genuinely, gen, generally with him for the majority of the time that we're, you know, that he's around and up and awake and everything like that. So I feel that on a spiritual level, you know, like <laughs> what you're saying right now, I'm like, oh well, you're, early day, you're very early days though. As I, well. know, I know. I yeah. know. Well, I mean, there's a physical connection that we don't have with, yeah. with kids, mm-hmm. you know, that mm-hmm. we will never have. So shout out to all the women watching and shout out to all yeah. the moms. Like very much so. You're, you're better than us. Thank you. <laughs> you know, like period. End of end of story. There is no more conversation about it when yeah, it comes yeah. to the parenting dad thing. And God, we just got really philosophical. I wasn't ready for that. You that, took us down a yeah. You took us down. I a know. Road. Thing, but this is the thing: when your wife turns to you or your partner turns to you, and then she gives you the eye that you're not doing enough kind of thing, you're like, "Well, shit. What? <laughs> what do I need to do? I don't know what to do next. Like, help me." <laughs> Just tell me what is it you want? Like Jerry Seinfeld right now. We're not. What's ri- the deal? Wow, he's got a really good Seinfeld. He does. That dude, sounds that really epic. good. Let's <laughs> practice I don't, know if you that. Have the, I don't know if you have this in um in the states. When you graduate here in Australia, you get a like a rugby jersey kind of thing with your school's emblem and colours and on it. That's and then cool. On the back, on the back you have like your class year so for this year it would be one nine and then above it you'd either have your name your surname or like a nickname and um i got nicknamed jerry after jerry seinfeld when i was in high school <laughs> and i wasn't a jokester or anything like that but i just had jerry on the back and everyone all my family were like what the hell is jerry like? <laughs> jerry <laughs> i know Frank, i don't know <laughs> who like, is oh, this like, guy who is this man who is yeah. it? he's the oh, australian man of mystery the Australian spy, you know, yeah. <laughs> Good that's what he's like, infiltrating Instagram. <laughs> someone, someone asked Frank a question from his latest monologue because I, I can't rummage through my notes I, right now. It's I'm, just, <laughs> there, there was, all, there was so much stuff there. It's, um, <laughs> yeah, sorry. It's just un- 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 unloaded. It's up. like <laughs> therapy. <laughs> It's like, yeah, this is, uh, that's what, that's why we're here, Frank. That's why we're oh, here. Thank you. Thank you. I'll send, uh, you can send me my, my bill. So I'll pay proceeds, to, proceeds to have a logistic conversation after the podcast. We need to set up a theme before the <laughs> because Frank has done three monologues and we are unable to extract what we need to extract. It's just, oh. well, well I, he, he's pretty much answered all the questions. I know. I'm I like, like, okay. So say, they, maybe maybe you shouldn't send them beforehand then dave no i'm just kidding and I, I know you didn't but um yeah. <laughs> i just i i'm gonna i'm gonna just connect with you on the the forgetting not mm-hmm. not that i'm a dad like if, if someone had asked me like oh you know you have kids I was like immediately yes i have kids yeah. but it's yeah, almost a, it's almost a startling revelation it's like oh yes 
I have I'm kids. Dad. Yeah, I'm yeah, dad. Yeah, yeah. Um, I have two. You know, I have a, I have a three year old and a and a one year old. And yep. and uh, it's funny. There there are days when they'll be down, just like you said. They'll be down for for even a nap. I would have just put them down 15 minutes ago, and I'll I'll be so just like in my own head and like they are out of sight, out of mind for a second. I know they're safe, and I know they're 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 taken care of, but um, you know they're screaming in the next room, trying to go to nap, trying to take a nap, but. Um, I have, I have this kind of wherewithal that I'm, I'm just like, I can turn it off. Not that I am a dad, but I can, I can kind of, it's, I think it's the, the male thing. You, we can compartmentalize so specifically and, and, um, with like hyper-focus in order to focus on this, the task at hand. Not yeah. that I forget that I have kids, but it's like, oh wow. Yeah. You know, that's right. I, I, I am a dad. I have two kids and you know, you go on and on about it. I love them very much. You know, wife, I, I love my kids very much. Um, but um, it's just, I, I think it's, I think it's really easy for us as, as men, as dads to kind of not disconnect, but, but compartmentalize and, and, and really focus. Um, uh, I don't know how you guys feel about that, but that's, that's kind of where I'm at with that. Hence the therapy session. Yes. Compartmentalize. <laughs> Absolutely. How, how old are your kids or a kid, son? Son, Three. he's two. Yeah. He's two. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So he, he was two in uh, August. Um, yeah. Because I, I have, I, I don't know. I, I, I remember having that, that feeling or that um, being in that place when, when it was just my son. My son is four now, and mm -hmm. I have twin girls who are two. Um, but now that there's three, like I feel like it's impossible. I, I can't leave that state where it's always constantly the, there it's like the twins there. it's the twins yeah, it's thing the twins yeah it's gotta I be don't know the if it's a twin thing or if it's like having the four-year-old like the like now oh, having okay. four years and yeah. the volume like it's the time <laughs> <of> the <volume. laughs> well um, this is the thing like i've got a cousin that they had a very similar situation to you dave they have a son that is i think he was three when they had their two twin girls and um which was a total shocker to them. Yeah. <laughs> and to the point where I called up my cousin's husband to say, you know, congratulations that they were you know, having twins. And he just answered the phone. He knew it was me. And he answered the phone simply, no hello, anything like that. He just said, you want one. <laughs> <laughs> and at the time I was like 25 and hadn't even met my wife. And I was like, you know what? Nah, I think I'm good <laughs> for another five years at least. Um, I, I had that same feeling. Actually, the first, I would say six months to maybe even a year there was mm. kind of this emotional disconnect with with the girls because mm -hmm. i don't know if it's I, I haven't gone through therapy about this but i don't know if it's just because it was a huge shocker for me as as an older dad because we started having kids uh when, when we we're both a little bit older so yep. um i was just like twins like do what I, I don't want to say i don't want twins but <laughs> Oh, like, mate, I'm touching wood right now. I've got a wooden table right next to me and I'm tapping this thing. <laughs> Can't do it. Can't do uh, it. Not right now. No, no This way. is what I say to my wife a lot of the time. Is when, when little mate is having an, an absolute shit uh, of a, you know, just going yep. ridiculous. <laughs> and, I, and I say, <laughs> without using a heap, heap of swear words, um, I turn to her and go, could you imagine if there was two of him? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what I would do. And Dave, you're in that sad reality, but not a sad reality. <laughs> wow. <laughs> but in terms of reality of having to just, if, if everything goes to, you know, absolute shit. Like I've got some friends at the moment, they are on a cruise ship with two kids. As soon as they got on there, their daughter threw up. And then the second younger boy, he, <laughs> he just hasn't eaten. He hasn't, he's just gone sick. I'm like, that is hell right there. That is absolute <laughs> hell. I'll be just like, okay. oh, get me off this boat. Nowhere to go. Speaking Nowhere of to go. speaking of the challenges of parenthood, particularly mm. the throw up and uh, not eating and having a shit of a day, and multiplying them in both value and quantity, yep. what has been the most reoccurring challenge for you that you are that you could share some wisdom on overcoming when it comes to um, being a dad, and yeah. maybe tied into the entrepreneurship because you're an entrepreneurial dad. You're not just a dad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, look, I think no one's going to be prepared for both things. If you're going to be hit with it, you just kind of roll with the punches. But um, I mean, I'm still an absolute shocker of being able to afford my child the time that he 
deserves a lot of the time either during the week or even the weekend because this business and, and everything that sort of comes with it online and all that kind of stuff is it feels very all consuming and I'm sure you guys kind of relate in certain respects is that you, you, you'd never, once you have a business, you don't switch off. Um, that's for me personally, um, because you're always thinking about, you know, either when's the next client coming in or when, when do I need to get the next job done or next social media post or, or whatever it is. And the social media part is because I enjoy it. That's, that's not a job. Um, but to, uh, yeah, it, to switch off and, and know when it, it's time to engage and be fully committed to that. I am absolute shocker with that. Um, you know, I still sit on my phone in the morning. I get up with my son every morning at five thirty, six o'clock and, and let my wife sleep um, until, you know, seven or eight o'clock and we'll just sit out there and he'll just watch, you know, YouTube, some, you know, kids shows on YouTube. And that's my time to sit in the phone and just be, you know, going through the socials and that and it's not until he goes he turns to me and goes you know dada yogurt um and i'm like okay yep yep i need to go up and make some breakfast now you just kind of feel and this is the weird thing is that not the weird thing this is a very evident thing that i've found now is that when i was still working full time when we had our son then and that was only for eight months i think once we'd had our little boy to the time i left um i was very it was very easy and I was very able to switch off from work. Um, I'd got it to a point where as soon as I walked out of that door, I was not thinking about that place at all. And I never had the feeling of not wanting to go into work. I never you know, hated going into that job um, or that office every day. Um, it was more that I just knew I could switch off here or there. And I'm just nowhere near that with this business to say that when I walk out of that office, if I leave my phone in there and I'm not thinking about anything else, that's, freaking hard at the moment so you know that's where i'm at i think that comes with being your thing right <clears throat> i think it's very easy for anybody to switch off from something that they're disconnected from as far as like a job yeah. um i was just recently you know really recently i was i had i had a day job and you know i i recently just kind of like left that and literally immediately the next day i was completely disconnected from not even thinking about that job anymore. Um, it wasn't that I didn't necessarily enjoy it all the time. It was just that it wasn't my thing. Um, yeah. But <clears throat> I think from, you know, being always um, thinking entrepreneurially and, and with this design business and, and with what we do, I think there's, there's, and we've talked about this a, a little bit about content creation and kind of there's that, there's content creation, everything is content. We're always thinking about content, make, making content in our head. We're also, also thinking about our clients. We're also thinking about us engaging with our clients and trying to be better for them. Um, there's, I, I don't think that there's something to switch off because it, it is us. We are, we are the ones that are, that are, um, um, it's not the be all and end all of it. Yeah, really. absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Right. So, um, I want to be respectful of your time, Francis. Um, and, uh, <laughs> You did not. I did. You did not. I just did. Say Francis. <laughs> oh my God. That's his middle That's name. A new one. Wow. Maybe I should, maybe no. I should put that in my bio. Just, just get a Francis. Get a Francis. <laughs> I think you should. G'day I think Frank. you should do a, a takeover of Francis, like your your middle name takeover. This is very <laughs> biblical. Any of that was last night. Like I was on this live stream for this whole purple Alzheimer's thing. I'm wearing this Jesus wig. <laughs> oh my like, God. How did that go? By the way, I completely missed that given the time zone. It was, it was fun. It was good. It probably wasn't ever at the same standard as front row was, but it was yeah. very casual, which was good. And we ended up, I think putting in about 500 us dollars, which was good. So, wow. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, it was, it was fun. I'd made it fun. I had like all these Oreos and I was like wiggling them down my face. And, uh, uh, oh no my one could do it. it was just, yeah, nice okay. Leave us, fun. leave, leave us with something before we have to end this thing. Something we maybe didn't talk about. Something that was on your heart <clears throat> that you wanted to, to, to get across, but we got lost in your epic monologues. You know? <laughs> I think this is probably one thing for the people that are for fellow designers that are on Instagram and may see what I do across uh, three different Instagram accounts, two podcasts, a YouTube channel and a business, as well as being a father and a husband. Um, you don't need to do all these things to be a success. 
Um, I don't consider my success, myself a success of a business light. I find myself a success because I'm happy doing what I'm doing. Um, it doesn't mean that you need to find the time and make the time and, and do all these things because I think this is kind of getting to a point where it's stretching me even. Mm. Um, but it, I do it because I enjoy it. I think this is just a creative outlet for me to show what I'm doing when I'm doing work that isn't, that's not for me. And this is kind of my time where I've found something that works very well for me and just from an enjoyment point of view and a happiness point of view um, that you, yeah, you just don't need to be doing all this stuff. And really at the end of the day, if all you need to be doing for your business is getting clients, focus on that. Mm-hmm. And then if, if, you know, video games or spending time with your family or kids or friends or whatever it is going out to nightclubs, that if that's for you, you do that, you prioritize those things you know, instead of having to feel like you need to create content or be present on social media and gain thousands and thousands of followers and have that pressure um, or even feel like you need to have things worked out, you know, there'd be 1% of us in the design community that have our shit worked out. Um, And I don't consider myself in that 1% by any stretch. So don't feel like you, you need to have it all sorted out, whether you are 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, whatever it is, um, you know, time is, you know, relative from where you are in life. It sounds very philosophical, I know, but um, yeah, I think it's just take that pressure off yourself, do what you enjoy and keep creating. That'd be it. Good day, Frank. Love it. Good day, Frank. Good day, Frank. <laughs> Good day, Frank, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> it's like, well, I need a mic. There's a mic I know. here as well. Can I wish. I'll drop I that. <laughs> That's something that we should actually send out to people before we have a podcast. Just a mic. Yeah. When you're done, just drop this. <laughs> well, I've got two. Like, there's one here, and then there's this road thing up here. For yeah. The call I've got next. So. <laughs> oh my god. All right. Well, well, thanks so much for uh, coming on this week. This my is a pleasure, tremendous guys. Uh, yeah. amount of information and stories and a combination, and uh, our link to Phil Collins somehow. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah that, that, for, <laughs> that, wait, that was amazing. What a journey we've been on tonight, ladies and gentlemen. Oh man, it's been a, yeah. it's been a genesis of, been of a gen- talk. Oh, <laughs> see, we should do. Some, we should have done some more dad jokes throughout this whole thing. Oh, so, next time there, there'll be a ta- part two. I'm sure. I'm sure. Well, um, all right. Time to write some down. Yeah. So, uh, real quickly, in ten seconds, where can people find you? Uh, g'day Frank on Instagram or G'day Design Life on Instagram and that's pretty much the same everywhere, everywhere else apart from LinkedIn which I am Reagan McCrill on there so if you can find me on there good luck to you <laughs> <laughs> thank you sir we appreciate you so much and we will Thanks see you voice. on the gram it's like yeah I'm holding every- all the design work you see on my Instagram and those awesome videos. <laughs> it's from everyone upstairs that I'm holding captive right now. <laughs>